Welcome back to the newest edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast. John Schmelk with you, today's guest, Sirius XM host and NFL insider Adam Kaplan. But first, I want to remind everybody, you can find the Giants Huddle Podcast on the Giants Podcast Network, presented by Investors Bank. You can find it on the Giants mobile app at Giants.com slash podcast and your favorite podcast platforms. Now we're joined by our guest, Adam Kaplan. You hear him on Sirius XM as an NFL insider. Adam, hope you and your family are doing well during what has been a weird year and a half for us. <laughs> Same to you, John. Yeah, it, it definitely has. But uh, hopefully in the near future, everybody gets vaccined up and uh, we can get back to normal because I really want to go back to training camps. First time in 18 years, I did not really have a training camp tour. So that was disappointing. Yeah, and you can tell we're, we're, we're kind of meeting that year circle here, Adam, because the last event we had last year was the NFL Combine, where I was in Indy, you were, I saw you in Indy, yep. and it was normal. You know, thank goodness nothing happened there because you look back and you're like, boy, really dodged a bullet that that wasn't some kind of crazy super spreader event. But, you know, this year we're not going to have it. I guess just from talking to people, I guess this is a fun place to start. How is that going to impact not just the drafting, the evaluation process, but the combine's also a place where free agent deals start getting negotiated, teams start talking trades and things of that nature. John, the most under discussed part of the off season is why we're seeing trades agreed to already. Well, it, you just said it, and this is a big reason why a couple of GMs said this to me. What you would do is you would start getting the ball rolling before you go to the combine. You might have the conversation with another team, or you would, if you hadn't, you would sit down with them at, at the combine and say, look, we like this player. We're interested. Let's get the ball rolling here. And that, so they didn't have the last week of February now as a crutch to get talks going. So what they're doing is they're, they've done them now and over a series of weeks, if you weren't in the playoffs, uh, like the lions, okay. Or like the Rams who dropped out early or like the Eagles and the Colts who dropped out early, you were able to get those discussions done now. And they've already got agreements done. It's really, it's really remarkable. And, and, and it's funny. You mentioned the combine. That was the last, event that's actually the last time i flew was uh last year yes yeah, coming, coming back from india it, it is kind of, it's amazing how fast time has flown here it's been a year now wow it really is crazy so i guess you talked about some of those trades that have happened and we can touch on those how much do you think what's holding up some more action here even in terms of teams cleaning up their own rosters releasing players things like that or teams waiting for the league to announce what this salary cap is going to be well, they have a ballpark. You know, they they know it's a minimum of 180. It's going to be between 180 and 185. That's kind of the belief around the league. And um, it it's a little bit better than the floor of 175, but uh, it'll be down from 198.3. That That's certainly significant. You've got the Steelers who have to work through the Ben Roethlisberger situation, which is significant, obviously, with a cap number of over 42 million. I mean, it's not going to be easy. And they're a team that restructures a lot of deals, and now they don't have that luxury. Uh, to do what they normally would do because the cap's going to be lower. So they at least have a ballpark, John, where it's going to be, and they'll work off that now. And you're seeing releases around the league. The Panthers have done a lot of work, restructures, cuts. Eagles cut to Sean Jackson. Uh, the, a couple other teams made cuts. So this is it's the typical action that we have, but it's probably going to be more so because teams, unfortunately, don't have as much cap space as they normally would. What are your thoughts here, Adam? Do you think it's going to come in around 180? There were reports a couple of weeks ago. I think Tom Pelissero had it that it could be as much as 185 or a little bit more than that. How much could these impending TV contracts that Peter King reported could be done within a month could maybe bump that up a little bit? What do you think uh, as a ballpark this final number might come in at? Yeah, I, again, I think it's – I was told by NFLPA source about a month ago expected to be at least 180, and that's where we are. We know it's – and we know by the memo that the league sent out uh, – it's going to be at least 180. And then it, 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 see, this is when you see reports out there. This happens every year. This reporter will say this, it's 182. This one will say it's 184. We know that's why I gave the range 180 to 185. It's going to be somewhere within there. And that that's again, getting a ballpark that helps you with minimum salary deals. Okay. If you've got, if you're going to get two or 3 million more than you originally thought that could help you resign a veteran, a veteran guy for maybe, a million or so that, that gives you a little bit more space. And then obviously when we get to the start of free agency, the only the top 51 salaries count. So uh, look, when, when you look at the giant situation, they're another team that's got to do a little bit of work here uh, to get to the number. They know that uh, they know where they're at with it. Uh, they've got some work to do. They got, they, they uh, already did one deal as we know with, um, uh, with, with uh, the safety that's going to come back, Logan Ryan, which is a, whoa, what a signing, by the way, that turned out to be yeah. really Great guy, by the way, really high, high class awesome guy. guy. 
yeah, it would be great for the locker room. So that was a good signing by Dave Gettleman. And this is kind of what you do now. You kind of forecast, okay, if we think it's between here and here, this is what we have to do. And this is what we'd like to do. And that's where they're at. No question about it. Just to give fans an idea, and, and I try to explain this on our shows, but you talk to teams around the league, you probably have a better feel for it than I do. Last year, you mentioned it was 198, right? Teams usually boil into their long-term plans, like a 5 to 10% increase every year in the cap. So they probably expect it to be somewhere between around 210, right? This year, give or take, somewhere yeah, in that 10, area. Well, yeah, I would tell you from talking to the NFLPA privately over the years, they, they always felt like the cap would be going up about $10 million at the very least per year. And that was the trajectory that we were on until we had, obviously, the pandemic, unfortunately. Right. So, so now it's yeah. going to be, what, 25, almost – you know, 20 less, you know, 25 less than what they thought. So yeah. what's the impact of that on teams? Well, it's, it's harder. It, it's harder. It, it, as I was saying before, that means you're going to probably have to release more veterans than you'd like to. And some teams are really against restructures. Mm -hmm. Some teams do it a lot. The saints, the Eagles, the Steelers, a couple other teams do it. They kick the can down the road, so to speak with um, potential dead money, these so-called dummy years where the, if you have to cut the player early, he's still going to count against your cap for future years. But even though he's not on there, that's dead money. So you hate that. Um, but right now, John, there the teams kind of know where they're at. It's a little bit, it's a little bit of a challenge. Now the other thing is you mentioned in passing, the question now is, do they borrow from future years for TV money with the TV money coming in? They know it's going to come in. Uh, that's the one thing we like to know is are they going to borrow from future years? Cause that obviously would help the cap a little bit, but we'll see what happens here. And, the challenges look there's you know you hate to see guys cut but there could be some good players out there that that could help teams and you know you saw the logan ryan situation who signed very late now he was his situation his situation was different but anytime good veterans hit the street and you've got some cap space that helps you do you think we'll see uh, two items do you think we'll see more post june first cuts designations this y year? yes and i believe by rule it used to be i, I can't remember the new cba if it's it's going to be two or not I, I know it was two yeah you could uh, you definitely could. And you, here's the thing. There's a strategy to it. Cause let's say you're cutting five or six players. Well, you want to, you obviously want to post June one, the guys who have the biggest cap number. So if you do that, if you're, if you're, if you're going to cut a guy, let's say, and it's a 20 plus million dollar cap it. Well, you're, you're, you're clearly going to want to post June one that now what that means is folks just to explain, cause we don't want to get too technical. We don't want to <laughs> bore people. Cause when you talk cap stuff, this is boring although it's been in my wheelhouse for a couple of decades, what you do is <clears throat> you designate it. It'll be on the, what's called the personnel notice. But unfortunately you have to carry the cap hit through June 1st on June 2nd. And then you half it. It's called halving it. You, you take the current year's cap and then the dead money. You, you, you do it over two seasons is the best way to explain it. Right. And that helps you alleviate the issue, but you don't want to be into that situation. You got to be careful. You, it, it's a gamble. You're rolling the dice. When you extend veteran contracts, when they're, when they're their 30s or you structure, God forbid you have a couple of players, A, that you want to cut, or B, that they retire early, John. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, if guy don't want to play anymore, it's a, it's a cap hit. Yeah, and there are some reports out there that that's something that, that perhaps the Giants might have to deal with with Nate Solder, who has money left on his contract. Yep. Yep. So I think that's a good window, Adam. Let's, let's kind of shift to the Giants here now. Let's start free agency first. They have two guys that are big parts of their defensive line, Leonard Williams and Dalvin Tomlinson, both hitting free agency. How do you see them handling those two players, given that was one of the strengths of the defense last year? Leonard Williams had a career year. But at the same time, everyone's wrestling with this reduced salary cap. Yeah, boy, the Leonard Williams situation is so interesting. I, it's funny how things work out. So I had a defensive coordinator tell me going to free agency last year that his 19 tape was bad, like really bad. Like he told his GM not to sign him. Well, you saw how well he played this past season. So Leonard Williams is a very unique 34 defensive lineman. Tremendous athleticism, great energy and passion. And he, he got the job done. Like what a bounce back year he had. And you mentioned Dalvin Tomlinson. What they have to figure out is, and also, by the way, they need major help at outside linebacker because they're running a 34 front. They need they run a hybrid, but Graham's defense is really a 34 and uh, of a base defense. You need pass rushers. And that, that to me, has got to be the mantra of Dave Gettleman, not only to bring hopefully both back, but even if you only bring one back or both, you've got to go address the outside linebacker situation. They, that's where you get your pressure on a 34 front. They, that, that's got to happen. And to me, that, that's got to be Gettleman's number one thing in the draft is, get outside pass rushers. 
I got to imagine if Leonard Williams does hit the open market and the Giants do have the option if they want, they could franchise him yep. for a second consecutive year. Uh, I got to imagine the demand for him. He's probably going to be looking for the same type of deal that DeForest Buckner got, that Chris Jones got, right, Adam, you would think? Yeah, and he's not that. Look, he's a nice player. He he, he only turns 27 in June. Uh, he, he he had a bounce back year. He's nowhere nearly as talented as those guys. I, I mean, sure, you – if you're an agent, you always ask for the sky. Like you ask for as much as you can get. And it, look, I'd never say never, but I, he's just not as good as those guys. He's a good football player. And again, there was a heck of a bounce back year. Uh, I, I don't see it because they're there. By the way, Chris Jones is a 43 D tackle. We, we should mention that they play in a different scheme. Yeah. Three Respon- technique. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Responsibilities are completely different. Uh, but look, G- Gellman, I'll give Gellman this. I, I've, I've like many people have criticized him over the years. He did. I mean, we, we could crush him on the Baker situation. Okay, that was a miss, obviously. But, and the Williams situation, remember, they put the transition, not the franchise tag on him last year. That was actually a pretty good decision. When you, when you look at it now using the tag, the franchise tag, you save money, he had a good year. And uh, look, that, that, that's good. He's coming, coming off a good year. And, and now, obviously, if he walks, John, you're, you're going to have to address that also in the draft. No question about it. How about Dalvin Tomlinson, Adam, in this year where you're going to have not a whole lot of money to spend in free agency for a lot of teams, for a guy that's been primarily a run stopper, but an excellent one, and a guy who was their man of the year nominee, checks all the boxes you want, hasn't missed a game in his four years in the NFL. What do you think the type of market's going to be for someone like that? Yeah, you know, he's an interesting player. Not a lot of, if you're not a Giant fan, Giant fans obviously know how good he is, and you know how good he is. But most fans around the country have no idea who he is. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's a right. former sec, former second round out of seventeen, uh, terrific football player, very underrated, gets the job done. And the, the it's funny because I remember talking to a team that I can't, it was after the, the the Giants beat the Seahawks, where they just manhandled them. They were incredible. And they they put a different defense in that week. They changed their scheme a little bit to to get to Russell Wilson. But that D-line, Williams, Tomlinson, Lawrence, I mean, I, I, the, the source that I spoke to said that, that their D-line was one of the most dominant performances they've seen. So it, it'll – like Tomlinson's a guy that – because he's not a pass rusher. Pass rushers, John, always get paid first. Run stopper second. I always say never say never with these things. You never know what one team wants to do in free agency and overpay a guy. That, again, that is if he leaves. We're not saying he's going to leave, but uh, he's – he doesn't have a fifth year option because he was not a first round pick. Good player though. That that that's a tell you what, that giant defense under Patrick Graham, I do want to mention what a job that he did last season. My goodness gracious, one of the best uh defensive coordinator jobs last season around the National Football League. The New York Giants and Quest Diagnostics want our fans to come back stronger than ever. You can now order your own lab test through Quest Direct to get the health answers you need most. We're joined by Adam Kaplan. Adam, and I think that brings up an interesting point. Are we going to see more players like we saw with Logan Ryan last year that are hanging out and maybe not signing until the summer? Because I got to imagine you think the guys in the top of the market are still going to get paid, yes. right? Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. it's that sure. second or third wave now that, that – do you think more of that's going to get pushed back and delayed since you're probably not going to have a real off-season program? Guys are virtual, so there's no pressure to go sign and, and, and go to a team early. Are we going to see this free agent process kind of – spread out over a much longer period of time this year yeah there's a belief around the league that some of the mid-level free agents might get squeezed a little bit that that because of the drop the significant drop in the cap yeah th- those are the guys now when they sign they sign it's not like free agency is over in a week it, now it's not like the nba free agency it's very very quick it's the, the the top part of it's about a day and a half then it's a slow drip for for a week or so and then it just dies the NBA's is unbelievably intense for a week and a week or so. And yeah, two days. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, the first couple of days are crazy, but it's still, it's still, yeah. you still, I'm sure. a big NBA guy. It's still fourth day, this big contract, seventh day, this big contract. Whereas the big contracts are over in a day and a half and it just, it's a super slow drip. Um, yeah. I, again, I, I do believe the mid-level guys are just the early talk that I've gotten. We're still th- over three weeks away, but the early talk that I've gotten is that the mid-level guys are the ones to be concerned about. The Giants have talked a lot about, Adam, in terms of adding playmakers this offseason to try to give Daniel Jones as much help as they can, especially on the outside. There's a good wide receiver for agency class, but how many of these guys do you think are actually exactly. going to hit free agency yeah. and which ones are going to get franchised? Yeah, I keep warning people that be careful of, like you see an, an incredible list. Majority of them are not going to be coming back. I mean, are going to stay with their own teams. 
Now, a couple of them, if they're not franchised, might sneak through. I don't see Chris Godwin going anywhere. I know how the Bucks feel about him. Kenny Galladay should stay with the Lions. Um, I could tell you with – there were some bad rumors out there. I, what I was told in Galladay is that he actually had a setback during his rehab during the season. Uh, he didn't dog it or – People were saying, oh, see, Galladay should have come back. He didn't want to come back. That's totally not true. Um, he had an injury and he had a setback or he would have been back. So um, Galladay is a guy so gifted, former third-round pick, really good football player. This is this is a, some of the guys that I, that could make it to market are guys like Marvin Jones is a little bit older, does have a somewhat, somewhat of an injury history, but terrific football player, excellent number two receiver. You know, with the Giants, John, with Darius Slayton, I'm a huge Slayton fan, but – he and Daniel Jones need to get together. You know, they need an off season together to get their timing down. Uh, their deep balls were just not there. Um, they, they definitely need it. What they need to add is a receiver with size, like a Galladay, or for some re shocking reason, he gets out there. Someone like that, who, by the way, listen, if he gets out there in free agency, he, he might not get uh, 20 million plus who knows. Uh, that's what he would normally command command. If he wasn't off an injury, Allen Robinson, uh, I don't see either side getting a deal done outside chance of a franchise tag. If he gets free high character guy, incredibly productive, gives you that size element opposite Darius Slayton. Um, and then Juju Smith Schuster, very good possibility. He doesn't resign. He's a, you can line him up everywhere, but he's not a physical receiver. And then it drops off. Then you've got a lot of mid-level free agents. I'll give you a guy that I really like who had his best year, Corey Davis, former, former first round pick yeah. the Titans. Titans have said they, they like to resign him, but they're going to try to be competitive with him. He would be a good addition for the, the Giants. The other interesting thing, Adam, is I wonder how much these teams start thinking now because we've seen now three straight wide receiver classes in the draft that have been fantastic, and this year is supposed to be just as good. How much are teams thinking, why are we going to go pay top money for a non-elite wide receiver in free agency? If we can just go draft one in the second round every year and just get, and we're going to be fine. We're third year, right. And then yeah. well, I'll give you an example of a guy that it would match what you're saying. I'm a big Josh Reynolds fan. Uh, of the Rams. He was more or less their third or fourth receiver over, over the four years of his career with the Rams guy absolutely could be an ex receiver starting NFL receiver. But as you just said, do I spend 10 to 12 million a year or draft a guy in the third round and hope, okay. Hope that he becomes a player. Now remember in rec with receivers changing teams, real mixed bag because you're learning a new scheme. Generally with coaches, you don't know. And with a quarterback you've never played with before. That's why, it's always better to develop your own players and rather than someone else's. So it definitely is a challenge uh, for, for, for free agency and the type of players that you're going to bring in. Let's circle back to something you mentioned before edge rushers and unlike receivers, edge rushers do not grow on trees in this league. They're very difficult to find. What do you think this free agent market class is going to be like for edge rushers? Because from everything I've read and the study that I've done, there's not going to be a ton of these guys in the draft this year. Yeah. At, at, on defense, when you look at pass rushers, Shaq Barrett, who got the tag last year, the outside linebacker for the box has been an incredible story as an undrafted uh, free agent with the Broncos. And he got tagged last year. He was coming off the 19th season where he had around 20 sacks. R really, really good player. Uh, he's right near at the top of the list there. But overall, it's not a great list. Um, you know, like I'll give you an example. The, the kind of guys like Kyler Fackrell are going to be out there. Those are the mid-level free agents. They're not going to be a lot. Like if you're a high-end pass rusher, you're getting franchise or transition tag most likely. But there are a couple might fall through the cracks. And that you're, you're looking for a guy that is not agreeable to what he's going to get from his home, the team that he's with, and doesn't get tagged. And, and these guys are typically mid-level free agents. Again, receiver, the receiver is by far the number one free agent position right now. And I think it's interesting, Adam, do you think we're going to see a lot of kind of one year prove it deals where these guys are like, all right, I'll sign for one year below market value. I know the cap's going up next year, so I'm going to wait to sign long term until we get to the 2022 offseason. Yeah, you look at you look at Logan Ryan, right? Logan Ryan, when he came in, he wasn't going to get the kind of deal that he wanted. Uh, he waited, as you said, he waited, he waited, he waited, and then he got an extension he, that and more or less. He signed a one year prove it deal as an older player in his 30s and. Look, you know, you were asking me before, look, I don't see a lot of guys waiting until August. Uh, here's the other thing. We don't know about the off season. Or are we going to have May and June this year? Because in terms of practices, we didn't last year. So a lot plays into that. We know veterans don't like being, they don't want to be there anyway. So I don't know how much it's really going to matter anyway, but it sure as heck means a lot for first and second year players. 
Hey, Giant fans, get in your Giants checking account from Investors Bank with the Giants brand, the debit card, security features, and discounts at the Giants online shop. You can earn up to $250 when you open an account at InvestorsBank.com slash Giants. Member FDIC. And Adam, you mentioned what, te- what teams around the league thought about the Giants' performance against Seattle. What are the general things you're hearing about the job that people think? You mentioned Patrick Graham, but Joe Judge has done as, as a first-year head coach with the Giants. A lot of respect, a ton of respect for him. Because if you talk to people around the league – when it got hired, not a lot of people, not, not, I know probably, I don't know, 75 to hundred coaches I've dealt with over 20 years. A lot of guys don't know him. Yeah. I know he coached receivers, but people know him for coaching special teams. And unless you're an East coast guy, a Philly area guy, he grew up near me, actually. Uh, you, a lot of guys just didn't know him and the discipline that they played with. And, you know, over time, you know, some people actually thought they overachieved. I, I, I don't know if by the record you would say that, but he certainly got them to play hard, which is, what coaches around the league noticed about the Giants and how well coached they were. Jason Garrett also, we should mention, did a very good job as the OC. And look, it, what you do is you look at their roster, John, and they have a base of a roster. You know, you know Daniel Jones is their guy quarterback. Barkley come back from his tour in ACL. Uh, you want to see Darius Slayton kind of take the next step. Andrew Thomas will get better. It was a struggle for him at left tackle, but he'll get better. Uh, you got to figure out the offensive line. That still is in flux. That That is a challenge for Dave Gettleman in offense to, to figure that out. Hey, by the way, Evan Ingram, good season. Stayed relatively healthy for a change. That was a good season. We'll see what they do with him. And then you got the great play calling with Patrick Graham on defense. They've got some really good players on defense. Brad Barry was an excellent signing. Uh, they went through a lot of corners. That they got to get through that. This, to me, on paper, if all things work out and Gettleman continues to build this roster and, and the young kids get better, this is an eight, eight, nine, and seven team for uh, 2021, which means they're taking a nice step. And that, that, that's all you really want. And obviously Barkley coming back. And by the way, Wayne Goldman did a great job filling in in a fun year. We'll see if they could bring him back. So there were some really good stories. A lot, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, John, that in the NFC East, you had so much turmoil last season. Um, we know what happened. Dallas fired their D coordinator. The, the Eagles fired their head coach. They, they, tra- they agreed to trade their quarterback. You had Washington getting the playoffs with their record. Um, and you have the giant situation, a lot of turmoil, uh, but you know what? Joe judge did the best job in that division. I would say no question. All right. Two things you mentioned in the answer that, that I think are interesting. How do you think the Giants should go about addressing that second perimeter cornerback? Because we already talked about two of the yeah. big needs receiver yeah. and pass rush. I think that second perimeter cornerback is probably next on the list. How do you think they best go about trying to address that? Yeah. I mean, you could, in fact, I mean, it would really surprise me if they don't bring at least a veteran in to compete for playing time to be in the mix. But also drafting one, you can't worry about missing on DeAndre Baker. That That's done and gone. It is what it is. You move on. You could still draft one fairly high. Um, I've heard mixed reviews. We're not even close to the draft yet. We're obviously well over two months. Right. But I've heard mixed reviews. Uh, it's, it's sort of top-heavy, then it drops off. Um, to me, I, I, you got to add two. I mean, I know they have Holmes and Yidam and – couple of other guys but to me you need high level guys uh and i i just think you got to bring in two and get competition opposite bradbury you mentioned daniel jones and i'm closer to it than pretty much everybody yeah. but i think if you look past the reduction in touchdown passes last year adam a lot of the other numbers are positive his completion percentage was up his deep ball was a lot better his turnovers were way down mm-hmm. in his second year compared to his first what do you think the general impression is around the league and from you in terms of what you saw from daniel jones in his second year and by the way he ran the ball a lot better too yes he's a pretty good athlete so i and it's interesting i was sitting next to an offense coordinator during the 19 senior bowl and this offense coordinator had not even watched his tape and he goes that looks like an nfl quarterback right there and he just watched him throw the football and you could see the ball comes out Pretty athletic guy, strong arm. Um, it seems to be pretty durable. He's taken a bunch of hits. You like his leadership, pretty good kid. You like the way he's wired. They just have to continue to build around him. And he's another guy, again, we talk about Slayton. It, he would have benefited from having an offseason. His improvement, he did that without May and June, OTAs, without a mandatory camp in June, without a real training camp, no preseason. So I, I'm encouraged. Look, yeah, the numbers weren't great, but – we didn't talk about Golden Tate. Um, Golden Tate obviously is not the player he once was. He's got an enormous contract. Um, we'll see if if he comes back, and even if he does, I mean, it, I can't imagine he's going to come back with the same number. Sterling Shepard, terrific player, but hurt a lot. That's you know that matters when when a guy like Sterling Shepard is not on the field a lot. You you that that hurts continuity. So look, there are some things going against it. And the line has to, you know it's another thing. The reason why this is not a playoff team to me. 
offensive line still a problem for him. It's just not good enough. And that, that's where Gettleman really has to address it. We, we, you, know, you could sit down with 10 Giant fans who really know the team, and you could all argue and debate what the number one needs are. I'm an offensive line guy in terms of how you win in the National Football League. There's a common bond, John, of winners. It's rare for an NFL team to make the Super Bowl or have a deep run without a very good offensive line. Yeah, we saw what happened to Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl and he was missing his two oh, offensive tackles. God, I yeah. Mean, yeah. It happened. So I think the offensive line is a good question now because Dave has added, Dave Gettleman has added some young offensive line in the last couple of years, right? He drafted Shane Lemieux last year. He got the playing time this year, had some struggles in pass pro. Matt Parrott was a third round pick. Toolsy guy was kind of in and out of the lineup. They rotated him in and out. So they have a bunch of young guys. You mentioned Andrew Thomas. Nick Gates did a good job his first year at center. How much, Adam, do they try to give these young guys room to grow? But, of course, with that, if that growth doesn't happen, there's an inherent risk to that, too. So how much – how do you balance in bringing in some veteran competition that are maybe more sure things? You'll give you a good baseline level of play, but allowing also these young guys Dave Gettleman has added to grow within this system and offense. Yeah, Andrew Thomas is your left tackle. Parrot's got to be your right tackle. At least at least come in with the thinking that is. Now, you, you could back – bring back Cam Fleming, or who could be a swing tackle. You could bring in another veteran just for, for comp, depth and competition. Uh, Hernandez has still got to get better, but he's a second-round pick. He's got to play. Settler's your veteran, and you talked about Gates. You, you're, you're still going to add two guys. You, you, and, but the thing is, it's not just – you make the good point there. Thomas has got to get better. He's got to play. That, that's just the way it is. I, I know he didn't have a great rookie season. Everybody knows this if you watch the Giants. Talking to other teams, they've pointed out to me he didn't play very well. Just has to keep playing. Uh, for, and look, they had an offensive line uh, coach change. We, we know about that. So that's another thing. So they, they got to get, get continuity going. Um, just getting these guys on the field together, getting the timing down. And they'll be better as they say. The other, the other thing is, John, is you got you got to settle on a, on a group here and then have key backups for insurance. So depth and competition, I, they need to add two more guys. All right, let's go around the league real quick here, Adam. What's the next big domino that's going to fall? We've seen Stafford. We've seen yeah. Wentz. We've seen Goff. What's next? I mean, you, you're gonna, you could see Marcus Mariota being dealt. Um, teams have to go through his injury history and see if they're comfortable with it. He looked great. I know it was only one game coming off the bench for Derek Carr. Boy, did he look good. L look, looked healthy, but 19, he, was, he had a bunch of injuries he was dealing with. Are you sure that the Raiders trade Mariota and keep Carr and it's not the other way around? Yeah, no. Um, the teams have told me that I've talked to the Raiders. Boy, they don't want to move Carr. Uh, I, it's funny you ask me it that way because the teams I spoke to, they were kind of surprised that the Raiders didn't want to move Carr. <laughs> because last year at this time, they, they were they were going to chase Brady. It's not a secret. They were absolutely going to do it. Once they got back from the combine, they changed their mind. Uh, but Carr had a good year, man. It the Raiders are a bad team. Their defense was horrendous. They just don't have enough talent. They, they, they've got to draft better in defense and add better players in defense. Their offense was good. Car's not the problem. It's the, the defense that needs to be rebuilt there with, with better talent. Uh, so, no, Car, Car, is, Car should be their guy for at least one year. It doesn't mean that they can't draft somebody. Um, but, look, we, we've had those trades. Um, Sam Darnold, by the way. Sam Darnold's a name to keep an eye on because Joe Douglas, the general manager of the Justice, did not draft him. I, I told people – uh, last fall, la last September, I do um, TV for a company called Sports Grid with my friend Scott Farrell. And we were talking about the Jets. I said, I know it's early, early Scott, for me to say this, but don't be shocked if they, they wind up trading Darnold. And he goes, what? I said, I'm just telling you. I know the way it is when these guys come in. They don't draft these players. And Darnold, by the way, was not playing well then, John. He didn't have a good year. He just had a disappointing year. I know things around him weren't very good. I, I get all that. But you got to control the things you can control. He just didn't play well. And again, this general manager inherited him, didn't draft him. And you see rumors out there about Darnold. And they're not settled on Darnold yet. They don't know what they're going to do at quarterback. And they've got the second pick overall. Yeah, two teams that I think are fascinating are the 49ers and the Bears. Yep. Because yep. they both have excellent rosters. But you could argue that the quarterback position is a big part of what's holding them back. Uh, you'd think they would want guys that can come in and help right away rather than going the draft route. So what path do you see those two franchises going down uh, in the next couple of months? Yeah, the Bears were heavily involved with the Stafford race. They were, they, I reported last week that they backed off of Wentz. Um, and it just left the Colts to, to get Carson Wentz. And then the Niners, I've heard Jimmy Garoppolo is available. You know, it's very hard to say if they're shopping him or not. But right now, to me, it's, it would make more sense to me than not that he'll be their starting quarterback this year. But I, I, I'm on record saying it, so I'll just repeat it. I believe they'll draft a quarterback in the first or second round if, with an asterisk, 
if there's a guy like Kyle Shanahan likes a lot, they'll draft him. I, I do believe, John, um, the, the early word on the draft is, again, we're, we're basically two and a half months out or somewhere around there. You, you could see you could see seven quarterbacks drafted in the first two rounds, the first 50 yeah. picks or so. So now, now Kyle's had, he's had pretty good success when Jimmy G's been healthy, but Garoppolo has been hurt a lot and he had some level of success with a couple of backups. But, you know, if you're the Niners, you got to settle on that. They overachieved two years ago. The coaching was tremendous last year. They had the worst injury and in COVID situation in the national football league where I like your assessment on the bears. They're teetering on here. You know, their coaching staff and front office staff, they need to win. They, the only reason why they got in the playoffs is because we had an extra wild card. Let's not forget about that. No question. How about the Deshaun Watson situation? How long are we going to be waiting for one of these two sides to blink? Because I really think the new CBA makes this interesting, right? Because now those fines, if he ends up holding out yep. in August, those don't get rescinded, right? So Correct. you have to pay through the you-know-what in order to, to really do a true holdout. So how stubborn do you think Houston's really going to be? And frankly, I don't blame him. Deshaun Watson's great. I wouldn't want to trade him either. But how do you see that whole thing playing out? So I had a GM tell me recently who, who's pretty plugged in to the quarterback situation because they're looking for one. He goes, look, when we spoke to them, they won't even talk about the name Deshaun Watson. They just changed the subject. Like we're not <laughs> going there. But everybody talks tough in February. There, there, there's no draft right now. We have just free agency. But this GM said, listen, when we get to late April, get to the draft, things could change. Things could change with Deshaun Watson. Again, right now, it's just all speculation. Nobody knows anything because they're not willing to do anything. But if they're willing to take calls, John, this guy's getting moved, period, end of story. And they'll get a king's ransom. Look, is this going to be the biggest trade package in the history of the league? Well, let's put it this way. The Matthew Stafford was a blockbuster trade. The Wentz was not. I wouldn't call that a blockbuster. It was a trade. But a blockbuster is Stafford for Goff and multiple first-round picks. That's a blockbuster. Um, yeah, I mean, it, a minimum of three first-rounders. And quite frankly, I'd won four. Because you're not going to get anyone like Deshaun Watson in the draft. You, you can't, you, you're not going to get, you're not going to get Lawrence because he's going one to, to the Jaguars. So. Well, I think it depends where those picks are too, right? Yeah. People always just say, Oh, three oh. Four first round picks. Well, if, it's, if it's the Jets and you get in the second overall pick, yeah. that, that is kind of like three first round picks in the twenties, right. right? Right. Well, it's funny you say that. Cause I remember talking to the Raiders uh, three years ago now for Mac and I was talking to them in June of 18 and they said, look, he's not available. We're not trading him. That's what teams are being told. Well, John Gruden, the, the, the head coach has got personnel control, got sick and tired of Mac waiting. So he traded him, as you know, right before the season started. And here's the problem. They assumed the Bears would be bad. The Bears shocked us. They wound up winning the division. Who knew? It was Matt Nagy's first year. So you make a really good point. It depends on what kind of team it's going to be. Like, you're right. The Jets' first rounders would, would be way more valuable than a mid-level to or better playoff team because those, those future first rounders clearly will not be as good. All right, final thing I want to touch on with you, the NFC East. If you would have told me a year ago that the Giants would have the firmest quarterback situation in the division, I would have said, you're nuts. But here we are. So let's start Philly first. Is this a, a total – are they going to look to do like a total reset here where they maybe trade some vets and acquire picks because they have a salary cap situation. They need to clean up too, Adam, as you know. How do you think Philly now handles this year, hurts the quarterback spot, they have a top 10 pick, where do they go? Yeah, they, they've got a six pick overall here. Uh, you know, they, they've got the extra third from the Colts and the Wentz trade. They're in a rebuild for the first time and I don't in, in well over a decade. They're in a they're in a rebuild here. And they know it. It's not actually it's more like 20 years because they were rebuilding when Andy Reid came in there and then Reid got the thing turned around immediately. You know, he got there in 1999. So they're in a rebuild. Washington. They got into the playoffs with a losing record. I, I still think the Jets, excuse me, the Giants coaching staff did a better job on the Washingtons. Big fan of Ron Rivera. I know it's subjective, but I just thought that the I judged over Chief with that roster. I thought he did a great job, and he he and his staff. Dallas is in sort of a transition. I don't know what they are. They'll get Dak Prescott back. He's not going anywhere. Everybody wants to write about rumors with the Cowboys. That's fine. I get it. They're America's team, but Dak's coming back. He'll get tagged if they don't if they can't. If they can't get him done, he's not going anywhere. So that, that that's it. Dallas is a team that's in transition. They, by the way, they have the most upside of all four teams in the NFC East. They they certainly, if the defense is better, um, they they could go somewhere this season. I, I they tried to change schemes last year during the pandemic that didn't work. But Dan Quinn coming in, running his version of Seattle's defense, I think that's going to work for them. I 
Right now, that would be my early pick to win the division with Dak Prescott coming back. Do you think Dak will be on the tag, or do you think Jerry Jones and Dak Prescott's agent are finally going to be able to figure this thing out? Well, Todd Francis is an agent, and Todd has – he's one of the top five agents in the business. Look, it's going to be a minimum of $40 million. Uh, He's got to beat Deshaun Watson's deal. That To me, that's the that's the floor for that deal is $40 million. It's get Per year, it's signing. It's got to be over – I mean, you're, you're looking at 40 to $43 million bucks per year – Gar- full guarantees at signing well over 80 million. I mean, it typical of Jerry Jones. He waits too long to get deals done. I mean, I, I go, I go, I'm so old. I remember when Emmett Smith held out and he, and he had, and Jerry Jones had to, had to back down and give him his money. Cause remember they, the, what, uh, went the 0 and two, right. To start yep, that 0 year. And two, yeah. Right. Jerry has a history of doing this. I don't, he did it with Zeke Elliott and he's done it here with Dak Prescott. Now in terms of tagging them, just like I said, it depends on where they think they are in two weeks. Final Washington. Do they trade up for a quarterback here? Do they just hang out and wait there? Is it Alex Smith one more year? What do you think happens with Washington's quarterback situation? Yeah, well, he's making too much to be a starter. Alex has got two years left, no guaranteed money left. Uh, Taylor Heineke did an incredible job. My goodness gracious, coming off the couch, so to speak. Scott Turner was the one who wanted him in there. Scott coached him in Carolina and Minnesota, did a good job. But they don't have their starter. They know that under contract. So uh, they will draft somebody just a matter of what round and, and how they're going to do it. They're a team that defensively, they don't need a whole lot. Uh, they, well, they're they good need, defensively, they, man. Whew. Yeah. They, they need, they need help in the back end, particularly corner corners, a problem for them. Offensive line. They need some competition. Receivers are a real challenge for them that they need help opposite Terry McLaurin, but quarterbacks the number one need for that football team. It's just a matter of how they want to do it. Adam, we really appreciate the time, man. This was fantastic. Thank you so much. Let's get together again soon, hopefully in person. We'll see you at one of these events yes. once the league gets yeah. back to normal, man. We appreciate it. And just give the fans an idea where they can find all your work and stuff that you're working on. You keep, uh, follow me on Twitter, at Kaplan NFL, C-A-P-L-A-N, NFL, also on Instagram with the same name. Uh, we do – I host a show called Inside the Birds. It's, it's mostly about the Eagles, but we got a ton of Giant fans watching last year. We did a roster review with the Giants, and – we also had Greg Cosell on from NFL Films. As oh, you he's know. great. We love Greg. Greg and I, Greg and I, and Jeff Mosher, my partner, we did a Giants review. It, the traffic we got for that show was unbelievable. And <laughs> fans love Greg because he just goes by tape study. He has no biases. And I love doing that show with him. We're going to do it again, folks. And follow me on Twitter, and we'll let you know when we're going to do that Giants show. Adam, good stuff, my friend. We appreciate it. Let's talk soon. Sounds good. Thanks. Adam Kaplan, NFL Insider, of Sirius XM. You just heard him where else you can find his work. Thanks for being with us on this episode of the Giants Auto Podcast. You can find it on the Giants Podcast Network presented by Investors Bank at Giants.com slash podcast, the Giants mobile app, and your favorite podcast platforms. For Adam, I'm Schmelk. We'll see you next time, everybody. Stay safe out there.